Welcome back to my channel. Um, last week I posted, um, I think it was last week, I um, posted a project I was working on on one of my Facebook groups, um, Tracy Fox's uh, Foxy Crafter, Crafters. And um, a lot of people asked me if I would do a tutorial, but I was actually planning on doing one. Um, this one's on paper tassels. Um, and I made quite a few of them. And um, I thought I'd go through just these few here, show you what I did to them, give you some ideas on how you can decorate them. And then I'll show you how I made, uh, how you go through um, the process on making one. So first of all, we'll start with this one. This one I made with a, a light card stock. It was a six by six piece of paper. Um, let's see, I decorated the top with some lace. Um, this a pearl and just a spacer bead and a crystal. And um, that's what I'm gonna show you today is how to put a um, eye pin in, in this paper tassel so you can put beads at the top. So that's that one. This one um, has a little bit of trim. Uh, I have a big box of trim uh, that was given to me by my mom. And um, that's where I got this uh, pink trim. Let me see if you can see that. And um, I did the same thing here with the eye pin and I put a bead cap on this one. And before I put the bead cap on, I put a little bit of glossy accents underneath to secure the bead cap a little bit. Um, and then I added some pearls. So that's that one. This one, um, I wanted to try putting a chain so I could hang a, a, um, a charm from the bottom of one. And it worked out really well. And I'll show you, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, there's a butterfly charm. And this one I decorated with some washi tape at the top. And then I had some of this rhinestone trim, I believe, actually I got it at the dollar store. Um, and then put a crystal on the top for a, hey, let me see if I can change the light here a little bit. I don't know if that helps any. I'll hold it up like that. Um, this one, I wanted to try uh, my idea of putting flowers around them. And I had these Tim Holtz flowers. They come in a bunch like this. And I just um, snipped them off at the very bottom and tried to be careful so the centers don't come out. And I took my um, art glitter glue and just kept gluing them on around, going around one at a time. And then I took um, an ink pad and then just um, rubbed them a little with some, some um, spun sugar distress ink. So that's that one, and then underneath is just a ribbon, piece of ribbon. Um, the last one is, I wanted to try it with, um, all these are made with like a light, light cardstock. I also wanted to try it with some paper to see how, you know, well it worked. And it turned out really well. Uh, you have to be a little bit more careful when you're working with rolling it, because you don't want the paper to tear. Um, this one I decorated with some gold um, trimming and then uh, a bead cap and just a little gold pearl. So that's that one. And you can add lobster claps, clasps to the tops of these to, um, you know, attach them to a journal or to, um, you know, a, a, a charm dangle that you might be making. So that's the ones I made. 
And I, um, let's go through, I thought I'd go through the supplies real quick. Um, just so you know what I use to make them. Um, um, you need a piece of paper or a large cardstock that, um, actually that's wrong. I forgot to correct that. It's not, it's one, actually one and three quarters inches by six inches. Um, you'll need a ruler and a pencil, a craft knife, um, you know, just your normal craft knife like this. Um, glue is pretty much your choice, but I used mostly art glitter glue. Um, you can use E6000 for um, attaching any kind of metal pieces like um, the um, the bead caps. You can use hot glue if you want. Um, they would that would work quite well, I think, with attaching these flowers. Um, or three in one adhesive, that might work well. I also used Fabri-Tac to attach um, the lace and the ribbons to the top. And um, I think I mentioned it, I'm not sure. Glossy accents you can use too. Um, I use that to fill in, and I'll show you what I mean, fill in the top of the tassel if the cone goes down and the bead sits in there too deep. If you want to fill in that hole, you can use glossy accents to fill in the hole. And I also used it to attach the, um, the bead cap to the top. Um, if you want to do the chain that I showed you with the charm on the end, you'll need some chain. Um, today I'm going to use actually a thinner chain because I want to attach a charm that's got a gold trimming around the edge. This is the only gold chain I have, but I thought I'd make it work. Um, and then uh, the chain that I used for the first one was a little bit bigger and that one's easier to work with. And if I had that size in gold, I'd be using that today. So that's the chain. Um, you need a lobster clasp if you want to put one on the end of your um, tassel so you can attach it to your journal. Um, you'll need jump rings. Um, I would say maybe, I don't know the size of jump rings in terms of um, millimeters, but I'll probably be using one this size. And if you like, we can measure it right here. Because I do have a millimeter. Um, this one measures, this particular jump ring um, measures about six millimeters. And then I'll probably use some smaller ones, which are like this one, this size right here get it in the light just right. Um, and this size is about, I'd say four, four millimeters. So those are basically the two size jump rings I'll use today. And you will also need, let's see what else. Um, you of course need some beads and some, you know, whatever beads you want to use to put on the top. Um, you might even want to use some spacer beads like this one in the middle. This one's a pretty cool spacer bead. It's got rhinestones in it. Um, and, um, or, and you'll need a charm to put on the end of the chain. Um, the trims, you can use washi tape brocade trims, ribbon, lace, rhinestones on a string like this, whatever, you know, comes to mind, your creative mind to use to decorate this top part of the tassel. Um, and then the jewelry tools are your normal 
Jewelry tools. You'll need like a cutter um, to cut chain. Um, flat nose. Uh, a bent nose. And um, chain nose. Maybe. You might want to have those. They're not absolutely necessary. And then of course, round nose for making the loop. And that's it. So, let's get started on making one. I made up a little um, thing for you so you could get your measurements. So, um, the piece of paper I said that you would need was six inches long or 15.2 centimeters by one and three quarters or 4.5 centimeters. So once you have your piece cut, which is, this is the one I'm going to use, make sure that what's your top, which is this, this is the top. So I'm going to turn it over and draw, just draw a line at a half inch. So I can use that as a guide when I'm making my cut lines for the fringe. The fringe as you can see from here, is an eighth of an inch. So I just made tick marks all the way down so I could follow them with my ruler. And then I used a, a grid pad, cutting pad, to cut this with my craft knife. There are alternatives to doing it with a craft knife. You can draw your lines, full lines, and cut the fringe with a scissor. Um, so you could like draw a full line down from the half inch mark or um, you can use your grid and and if you have a grid that has eight inch marks you can follow the eight inch marks you can actually use some washi tape which is what I did to keep the paper from slipping on the cutting pad. It helped a lot when I did that. So I just put some washi tape on the end like that and lined it up with a line on the grid and then the way I did it was I just took my ruler and started making tick marks all the way down the piece of paper at an eighth of an inch. The fringe doesn't have to be exactly perfect. So if you, you know, go off a little bit with your craft knife, that's fine. It's going to be okay because a lot of the fringe gets rolled up into the middle and doesn't even show very much. So this is how I did it. I'm going to turn my grid just a little bit here so I can work. And what I did when I will... I would take my knife and put my knife on the mark. Then I would move my ruler and start cutting. Oh, let me uh, tape it on the top here. This keeps me from having to overuse my hand and press down on the ruler real hard. So. And then I just went on along down, lining up my ruler, making sure it's, you know, pretty straight. It takes all about maybe a few minutes to go all the way down a piece of paper. Okay. So I have it all cut. I need to take this off carefully. There we go. Um, the next thing you do, there's one supply thing that I skipped. I'm so sorry. Um, you'll need an eye pin. At least that's what I used. You can try to use a head pin if you want and put a bead, like a seed bead at the bottom and um, use that instead. 
but if you do use a head pin, you won't be able to attach a chain. So I use an eye pin. This one is about three inches, I think, or no, it's about two inches, about one and five eighths inches long. And that seemed to be a good length. It worked real well for me. So you'll need an eye pin. So, okay, now everything's cut. I just, uh, if you do it with a craft knife, just make sure your, all your fringes are cut through. Sometimes I would miss, I just have to cut them again. So it looks like I got them all cut. Now, I'm gonna take a bone folder and I am gonna run my bone folder on the wrong side and curl the paper just a little bit. That helps when you're rolling it. Um, I have such small hands, so it's hard to reach. And it helps when you're rolling it and it kind of breaks down the paper so it makes it easier to roll. So just run your, you know, finger or you can do it like this run your finger along the edge and it'll curl, naturally curl. Then take a pair of scissors and let me just figure out which end I want to start at. Um, cut off about three fringes right at the half inch mark at the top like that. Okay. Then I took a pokey tool, another supply tool I forgot on my list, and I just poked about an eighth of an inch in, maybe less, two holes in the, pa in the paper. One right, you know, above the other. About, I, I spaced mine about quarter of an inch apart. So then I took the eye pin and I poked it through one hole and then poked it through the second hole. Like as if you're sewing with a needle. And then I pulled it through till the eye pin hits the bottom of the paper. Then I took some glue, art glitter is what I used, and put some glue right along each side of the head pin in the paper. And then I let it set for just a few minutes. And then I took the paper and you just fold it over that eye pin. You're gonna get your fingers in the glue, but um, fold it over, kind of press down on it, work that paper a little bit so it softens up. Now this is where you gotta be a little careful because you don't want to rip the paper. Then I found that rolling it towards me at this stage worked the best. And you start rolling and rolling and rolling. But you really want to get a nice good start to that, you know, to the roll. So it doesn't, you know, go off on you as you're going down the paper. So make sure your roll is, is good and that you got a good start to it. And then grab your glue and then just um, put a little glue on about an inch or so and start rolling it up. It'll go easier once that eye pin, the bottom of that eye pin is covered up. Then it'll roll a little bit easier, but as you're moving along, you can. Pull the paper lightly, not too hard. 
front light there. Got some more glue. You don't need a lot. Just keep rolling and pulling. You want to try to keep it as round as you can as you're rolling. At this point, sometimes I'll put it down and roll that way. Whatever is a better position for you. There's no right or wrong. And I'll pick it up and pull the paper a little bit. And then make sure you put a good amount of blue at the end so it stays closed. Like that. To curl your fringe, like, um, you know, make it stand out more, I just take the little pieces and rub my bone fold around them. There, see how it's kind of flares out a little bit. So that's your tassel. Now, I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna be back with another piece of paper and I'm gonna show you how I attached a p the chain. Okay, so I have my strip here and I poked my holes. I thought I'd go through that one more time with you my holes. I'll put my eye pin in. And then I just thread it through those holes. Gave it a good head start and then I put the chain on. I just wanted to Roll it over maybe once or twice, and then I'll put the chain on. So I took my jump ring and added it to the end of the chain, and then threaded it through this eye pin. I that grab my other tool. And close the jump ring. You know, a lot of you probably know how to do this. And you don't want um, a big jump ring for that because you don't want it to interfere with rolling your um, tassel. So you want a bit it to that jump ring that attaches the chain to be, you know, a, small so when you're doing it with rolling it with a chain it's about the same as rolling it without you just have to keep the chain from getting in the way all right I'm gonna hold that for a minute or two so it sticks and <laughs> your chain you have to kind of do it, and my mind got a little bit tangled up, but that's okay. Just pull it out. Okay. Now, remember before when I started, I talked about a little bit of an indentation at the top. I don't know if you can see that real well, but if you want to fill that in, so your bead doesn't sink into that hole. I don't know if I have one that really demonstrates that. Here's a small one. See how it kind of sinks in that, that indentation? If you didn't want that to happen, um, you can put some glossy accents to fill in that little hole there. Problem solved. Okay. I'm going to put my bead cap on. I'm going to take the glossy accents. It's 
probably stopped up again. So I'm going to need my safety pin here. Okay. And I just put it around the edge. Just to give that um, cap a little security. Get it through the hole. There we go. There's the bead cap. Turn that over a little. Now it does take glossy accents a little while to dry. I'm gonna try to work with it wet here. So I picked out some beads to put on here. And I'm gonna put on a pink one. This one seems to be closed up. Oh, I got it. There we go. Pink one. And a little crystal. And I think that's all I'm going to do at the top. And then, of course, as you all know, how to make that loop. Some people do a wrap loop. I just do a regular loop. Just grab it all. Bend it over at a right angle and I take my cutter and I cut right there keep it down so it doesn't fly up in my face and then you take your round nose and make your loop So there's the top part done. And then now you have your chain. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna clip off just a little bit. Maybe about three links here. And um, one, two, three. Clip those. Alright, now I take another jump ring and the charm I'm going to put on. I'm going to use this charm. Oh, this already has a jump ring, but it's a little bit thick and it won't go through that chain. So, I'll put the one on that I picked out. You could also take that off, but for... Now I'm not going to. We're going to put it on our, our chain and then you loop through the chain like that and close up. And the last thing we have to do, there's your be a little bit long but that's okay it looks okay you can always take it off and shorten it and then just you know curl up some of my fringe or the fringe and you are done um I'm gonna use this lace and put that around the edge like that. This is where I use my fabric tuck. I just put a little bit on. At the top. And then when you get where it joins together, you know, make sure it's all stuck down well before you cut it. So you can make sure that you get a real nice cut. And 
I'm going to start right there and then check it and I'll probably trim off just a little bit more. So it's nice and even. And if you want, you can tap down these little ends where they meet and it gives it more of a, a finished look if you do that. And there you have it, your tassel. So I hope you try to make some. And if you do, then share them. I'd love to see them. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Leave a comment in the you know comment area below the video. Um, I'd like to say thank you to all the new subscribers. I really, truly appreciate it. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you later. Bye.